Smoky, dokey, smoky. Okay guys, we're back and I'm answering more of your submitted questions. Today's question is about the tailoring trade in general and how do you learn it? So, question is, uh, what do you recommend uh, books or courses to learn tailoring? And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this apart one by one and, and kind of give you guys a, an idea of what I think, otherwise you, you know, wouldn't be watching this video. Um, uh, courses. Um, I, uh, I've never taken, I've never personally taken one of the, uh, one of the modern courses, say like the Savile Row Academy or the, the online classes that Rory Duffy uh, offers or even the um, American Bespoke Tailoring Academy. Um, People have reached out, um, and I've seen some of their uh, their work from graduation, uh, especially from the, uh, the American Bespoke Tailoring Academy. It's quite good. Um, I think they're really, really good in-depth um, systems, and uh, I mean, any kind of structured learning from a professional is a good thing. Um, it also helps to have classmates, and that way you can kind of bounce information off and kind of like share study notes like in any other course. Um, I don't know how it'll work today with the, the pandemic with the more remote learning. I don't think it should be that big of a problem. Uh, the only issue I think you'd come across um, would be like not having your own equipment uh, uh, at your workplace or your home, depending on if you're brand new to the trade or sewing in general. Books. Um, all right, so recently I had, um, I had looked through um, my old cutting books and uh, I have one right in front of me here. And I have a Rubbermaid full of cutting books. And um, I went through them last week and I was looking at uh, differences between, uh, more importantly than actually reading the drafts, I've uh, figured out that um, it's more important to read uh, before and after because I'll have little tidbits of information that'll help you kind of connect the dots. Um, and this is a good way of learning uh, tailoring because basically the draft, and I'll, I'll put up a photo of the draft, but basically the draft is just a step-by-step -step instructional and it works on two different things, so uh, two different methods. So you have, um, you would take the measurements and you'd either apply them to this draft, which is a, uh, almost like a schematic, uh, and you would either use direct measures, which would be like, mm, let's say from, you know, shoulder to shoulder, that's a direct measure. That's not gonna be something that's proportional. And then obviously the second one is proportional measurements, which would be like if I, if I was trying to get a measurement somewhere else other than the chest, uh, they might say, well, you should use half of the scale. And the scale is something that you would arrive on um, that the author of the draft would actually, um, would define at the very, very beginning. So sometimes it's, you know, if you have a 40 inch chest, the scale could be 20, so half chest. But also it could be a sixth of the chest plus, or a third of the chest plus six inches, which ends up being, you know, pretty similar. But it just depends on who has uh, written the draft. Um, so again, like the, the distance from the nape of the neck to the underarm, if you didn't take that measure, it could just be half scale, which would be 10 inches if the scale is 20 and you're taking half of that. But it, actually more interesting than that too, the easiest way, or not the easiest way, but the most difficult way uh, to, to do tailoring is completely by yourself. I'm mean, sorry, to learn tailoring is completely by yourself. And the reason is, is that a lot of people have reached out to me and they're like, I want to draft or I want to learn how to like cut. But, you know, I have a really big chest or I have a really big stomach or I have big thighs or I have, you know, something. I'm, you know, very erect or very stooped. Um, and the problem with these drafts is that they only draft... Uh, for the very, very like median man, like the very, very like mediocre, uh, average, normal stance. In some drafting books, there are exceptions to it. So you draft it like normal, and in the back, it would say if you have an erect, uh, you know, uh, posture, you drop the back and raise the front, and that kind of uh, that kind of stuff. You know, you'd, you'd make the the front longer and the back shorter to accommodate. But I find is like the, the more that you're going to do this, the more you're going to realize that if you stick to the letter of the law when it comes to these drafts, you are just going to end up with a product that kind of looks like it's off the rack. It'll fit you, yes. But a lot of these don't incorporate a lot of the uh, uh, different attitudes of stance. So uh, what I have done, and I just put a picture up uh, on my Instagram. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It depends when you're watching this and it depends when you've seen the picture. But I put it up a little while ago. 
where I had taken this draft specifically that I'm looking at and I'd stripped it down. And stripping a draft is a very, uh, it's a very laborious project and it takes a lot of, uh, uh, takes a lot of uh, uh, mental, um, it's almost like a mental marathon because you have to keep all these things in checks and balances. And I'll explain what I did when I'm talking about stripping a draft. So I'll put this up on the, uh, over my face so you guys can actually see it. So just for an example, this one, um, this one measurement here that says 12 from X will equal half across back plus two seams, which in brackets three quarter inch. Okay. So square line from 12 to locate 13, 14, whatever. But if you actually look at the very, very beginning of the draft, it says um, seven and three quarter half across back. The working scale is a third chest plus six. Uh, and also it says three eight seams are allowed through all parts of the draft. Now, what gets confusing is that if you had to isolate exactly what measurements go where, when you just follow this blindly, and if you, let's say, change the seam allowance to something else, um, you're gonna have a very, very bad time. Um, so for an example, from 12 to, or from X to 12, is a half back plus two seams. So you know you have your half back, which is the seven and three quarter, but two seams, if you didn't know it was three eighths, you would just add whatever seam you'd like. But to make sure that you get this down to the least amount of length that you can get before it starts being tight, I, what I did is I had gone through and taken away all the seam allowances, and then I also had to figure out how big that actual part is. So it ends up being something like six and, and, and whatever, um, because I also removed the distance from X to one, um, because I don't necessarily like a draped back. So those are the kind of things that you know, when you go through step by step and the more that you keep doing it, the more that you can kind of filter out all the tertiary things or the stuff that may seem sacrosanct, but it's not really, um, you can kind of move around numbers. Also, if you decide to apply more direct numbers or direct measures, like for instance, I have a very, very um, uh, broad chest compared to my back. I have virtually no back. Um, so I would actually take a direct measure from my chest and back just to make sure that my arm hole is in the right position and I, you know, I don't have uh, I don't have too much tightness here and I can still have a lot of movement without it pulling on my sleeves. So I would apply that and I would kind of ignore the measurements, let's say from 23 to 24, which in that case would be a proportional measure, which I wouldn't go by. So this situation, now why am I, I mean, I'm, at the end of the day, why am I telling you all this? The idea is that the more that you kind of mess around with drafts and um, and kind of experiment with them after you've already done a couple plain drafts where you've gone through the entire process and kind of figured out their kinks and kind of figured out um, you know what fits and what doesn't what looks more modern what looks more um, uh, uh, you know dated and that kind of thing so you can kind of alter the draft as you go bit by bit and then eventually you get to a point where you'll kind of just overhaul the entire thing so I have used this draft as a very very baseline to start with in fact, I did cut myself a linen jacket out of this draft purely just by the letter of the law of the draft, and I did it, I don't know, about eight years ago, and it turned out pretty well. Lots of alterations, but, you know, just mostly stance, too, right? Another way to uh, to learn tailoring is, um, is probably the hardest to, to find right now. So if you can't do a course uh, in person or online, and you don't have access to cutting books, or like, you know, that seems like a very, very daunting way to start. Um, the most efficient way is to find a tailor uh, who is willing to take on apprentices, and it's uh, it becomes it becomes a gamble for the apprentice and the teacher. I mean, the the teacher obviously wants someone to stick around to actually teach the completion of everything, um, but they also don't want the uh, the student to burn out. At the same time, for the student, they want to have a con they want to have a compiled list of uh, of skills. Um, obviously, I mean, you want to be able to do most of the things and kind of figure out some of the things on your own. Um, and it's a tricky balance because uh, having someone stick around for years and years and years just to learn a couple things uh, is not really how some things fit in the world today. You know, a bit disjointed. I mean, I'm recording this on a telephone, you know, who would have even thought? Um, uh, but yeah, there is a certain amount of like discipline it takes to get down the, uh, you know, the, the rhythm for hand sewing. Uh, the just the pure amount of hours on the machine to you know figure out how it works and to, to figure out like the the temperament in the machine 
Um, then it's just learning all the processes, pockets, collars, sleeves, uh, pressing, um, you know, how to, how to make a canvas, how to do all these things. Some skills are transferable, but, um, you know, it's just a lot of time in. It's a lot of energy and time invested both from the tailor and from the student. You know, that's not necessarily um, like a bad thing, you know. I mean, obviously you want to uh, pass on a lot of knowledge. It's just extremely time consuming. Um, but if you can find someone and they do take you on as an apprentice, that is possibly the best way. And it's going to lead into my last little, um, my last little rant here is that uh, it is much easier uh, if you learn from someone competent, it is much easier to retain and keep those skills and um, and uh, concepts in your head if they're taught to you properly the first time, rather than learn them for the sake of a job and then have to go back and realize that everything or most things you've learned could be done uh, either better or quicker, um, and then have to unlearn them. Because a lot of things, it's sort of like a uh, like a Rube Goldberg machine of. Uh, of, uh, of making, where if you change one thing, it could change another thing. Um, and if you don't do one thing, uh, it could have a, a domino effect on the other things, right? So if I, let's say if I put in wing pads in a, in a, in a jacket, or if I put in, sorry, if I put in a very, very long sleeve head in the back of a coat and I didn't put in wing pads, well, that's eventually just going to turn back on itself and then I'll have a problem. Um, and again, too, if I didn't know I was cutting wing pads and I cut a very narrow back, again, it's just more volume and it'll actually narrow the back. So these kind of things are usually either uh, told to you or with the last way to learn tailoring, which is actually the most effective. However, no one is going to want to hear this, is you have to just mess up a bunch of stuff completely over and over and over again. It is experience and failure when it comes to sewing is the only true tailor because it's the only information that you really, really, really earn. There's expedited ways of someone telling you the best way, but man, oh man, there's nothing like, there's nothing like being up at, uh, at 11 o'clock at night and messing up something and thinking, how do I fix this? And, and there is no other way of, uh, of getting around it. You really kind of just figure it out for yourself. Um, but a good way to kind of get into the bridge from learning like a uh, so very, very slow tailoring like this, like the cutting and the making is um, to repurpose clothes. So, you know, once the world opens up again, uh, go your you know local thrift store, find a jacket that's close in size, or you can challenge yourself by getting a big jacket or a big pair of trousers, rip off the sleeves, just kind of mess around with it. Don't spend too much money. And if it ends up being a colossal failure, well, you know, that's okay. Cause at least, you know, you didn't spend a lot of money or, uh, possibly time on it. Um, but that's really, really the best way to learn. That's how I did it. I just kind of went to uh, like value villages and thrift stores and bought, you know, kind of old suits and, and tried to make them fit me. And I can just wear them around town and be a, you know, a really cool guy. The only, uh, the only 17 year old in my hometown walking around with a, a tweed three piece suit. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I mean, that's, that's all I can say. I mean, it's a very long winded answer, but, um, uh, I think the the best teacher is experience, and um, it'll be hard for a bit, but then the mistakes become smaller and smaller, and you know you don't feel them as much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, keep sending me all your uh, your questions, either DMing me through Instagram or comments on YouTube or comments on posts or whatever. You'll find a method to to get to me. I'm also going to put up another one of those stories with that uh, ask me anything kind of blurb, and then you can you can write them there. Um, I'll compile them all together, then I'll kind of pick and choose which ones I want to do. I do want to get through all of them. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching, and take care of each other, and I'll see you soon.